right, man, let me tell you, flounder have been very, very tough to come by here in South Louisiana over the last, I don't know, four or five years. It's been a while. But I was fortunate enough to catch one today, and it's a really, really good fish. So whenever I catch flounder, there's only one way that I like to prepare them, and that's stuffed. I mean, they're just made to be stuffed. But what I do first, before I stuff the fish, is I debone it entirely. It will be entirely deboned. Makes it so easy to eat, so tasty. I'm gonna show you now how to do that. It doesn't take very long at all, and it really, really makes for a good product. All right, so the first thing we do, we're gonna cut off off this fish's head and its gut cavity. All right, you discard the head and we're gonna clean out this gut cavity. That's really kind of the most gruesome part. Other than that, it's pretty easy. Now I actually had to use a serrated knife to get through some of those bones, it's common. Just a normal steak knife from your kitchen will work fine. All right, so now we got the head removed, we cleaned out the gut cavity. The next step is to scale the fish. Now this is a messy part of the process, so I typically do it outside, and I use a spoon. A lot of people use a butter knife. I like to use a spoon. I'll show you what to do. You've probably scaled fish before, but it's really quick and easy. All right, so now we got it scaled, and of course I'm full of scales, but I, I rinse the fish to get the scales off, and now next step is to find the spine of the fish. You can kind of see the line, the lateral line, it indicates where the spine is, and you just want to cut straight down from there, from the head all the way to the tail. All right, what we're gonna do from there is just fillet the meat away from those bones. Start at the head side and just kind of work your way down, being very careful not to cut your thumb. Now flounder has bones that emerge from the spine. The spine is right here. It also has bones that run along the, I don't know, they're called dorsal fin in a, in a flounder, I guess they are. And they're, they're separated, so you kind of, it's a little catch point right there. You got to get past it. And you want to trim it all the way to that dorsal fin. All right, once you get that side, do the same thing to the other side. Now the dark side of the flounder always has the thickest meat, but on a flounder this size, you still have a lot of meat on that other side. It's the same thing, we cut right along that lateral line. This episode of Marshman Masson brought to you by Puglia Sporting Goods. All right, so at this point we have basically four wings, two on each side of the fish, and our bones run down the middle, separated from the flesh. So the next thing you need are kitchen shears. If you don't have them, you could make do with scissors and a pinch as long as they're pretty heavy duty, but I've got some kitchen shears, so I'm gonna use those. All right, so you come to the dorsal fin side of the fish and you just cut along the bones. Trying your best not to actually cut the meat. Do the same thing on the other side. All right, when you get to the tail section, you're not gonna eat that anyway. Just cut straight across. And that's it. That's the bones of your flounder, completely separated from your flounder. Discard that, and here's what you're left with. A beautiful deboned flounder ready for stuffing. Now I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I'm gonna show you exactly how I stuff these fish, what I stuff them with. I'll tell you this, I use a lot of butter. Flounder's kind of a dry fish, so you need to add some fat. It's very, very lean, so you use a lot of butter. If you're squeamish about butter, you don't wanna make this recipe. Don't use margarine or anything like that. You need to use real butter, you need to use a lot of it, trust me. You're only gonna do this every once in a while, so you're not gonna die of a heart attack tomorrow. Use real butter. All right, first up, I've got some celery. A definite requirement. I've also got an onion I'm gonna chop up. Typically I put bell pepper in this, but I'm out of bell pepper right now. It's not necessary, but it does add a, a nice flavor. But I'm gonna chop up this celery, chop up the onion, soften them in some butter, 
And then the magic happens. All right, I've got an almost full stick of butter that I'm gonna put in this pan. That will be the fat for our stuffing. Let that melt and throw in our veggies. Now you really gotta let your vegetables get soft. Very, very important. You don't want crunchy onions or celery in there. It takes a while for them to really get soft. Be patient. All right, if you saw my recent cooking video, you know I've got a basil plant. I've been pulling from this thing a lot lately, so it's getting a little bit lean, but I don't really need a ton of basil for what I'm doing tonight, but I am gonna harvest some of it. I know very few people who don't like basil, so it's always good to have a plant around. All right, we're gonna chop up our basil. We're not gonna put it in yet, though. Just wanna have it ready. Man, does that smell good. Whew, love it. All right, so our veggies are soft. Been cooking them probably about 15 minutes or so. They're about perfect. So like most cooks, I make things different every time I make them. Sometimes I put garlic in this, sometimes I don't, but it's always better with garlic. I'm gonna put some garlic in it. Now I cheat and use this pre-cut garlic. I put this in really late in this process because garlic has a tendency to burn and it, nothing tastes worse than burnt garlic. Put that in there just for about maybe 20 seconds or so. And next we're gonna put in our basil. Put that in even less time, maybe 10 seconds. Man, I wish you could smell this. Let me tell you, it already smells like heaven. It is gonna be very, very good. All right, we're gonna cut the fire off and then we got a few more ingredients to add. All right, our final ingredient before the breadcrumbs, Worcestershire sauce, however you say it. What about yay? We'll mix that in. Made it smell even better. And Worcestershire goes very, very well with fish. It's actually made from fish. It's a disgusting process that they go through to make it, but it tastes delicious. And then we're gonna dump some breadcrumbs. I like my stuffing to be a little bit loose, full of fat, I don't like it dry at all, so I don't use a ton of breadcrumbs. That's right about the right consistency that I like. This weekend, we had a crab boil. I bought six dozen crabs, boiled them here at home. We had some leftovers, so we picked the meat. So it just happened that two days later, I caught this flounder, two days after the crab boil. So I'm gonna throw some crab meat in here because nothing makes this stuffing better than crab meat. But trust me, you don't need the crab meat. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. Just leave it out. The past five or six times I've made this has been without crab meat and it's absolutely delicious. You don't need it. But since I have it, I'm gonna add it. Look at that. You know the value of this? It's probably about two pounds of crab meat. It's about like $40 of value. I'm not gonna use it all in here. Uh, I'm gonna make some crab meat to gratin tomorrow, but I'm gonna add some of this to our stuffing. Crab meat and bacon makes everything better. This episode of Marsh Man Mass On brought to you by H&H &H Lore Company and by Bill Lewis and by Cito New Orleans and by Versamax Courts and by Sportsman's Outfitters. All right, since we took all that care on that flounder skin, we don't want it to stick into the pan. You just want to butter your pan. Yep, even more butter. And I put our boneless flounder in the fridge while we were preparing that stuffing, so I'm gonna pull it out. All right, put that white side down, leave the dark side up, and there we go, our stuffing's gonna go right inside of there. I'm gonna use a spoon because our stuffing is still a little bit warm. Just kinda slide it into the pocket here. Whoo, boy does that smell good. All right, our stuffing is inside of our pocket here. Ooh, it's still warm, it's really warm. We're gonna go ahead and close it up. All right, we've got Morton Seasonal, Tony Shashri's, Louisiana Fish Fry, the orange seasoning, all of them are, are really good. Just coat the top of the 
filet. And now we're gonna put it in a 350 degree oven for 25 minutes. It'll be the longest 25 minutes of your life because you know what's coming. All right, it's ready. Woo! It smells delicious in here. I can't wait to eat it. Look at that, perfect stuffed flounder. Man, it's gonna be tasty. All right, now the best way to serve this is just to cut it crosswise with a knife. And you take a spatula, preferably a fish spatula, and just scoop it up. All right, let's see how it is. Man, I gotta tell you, it's the first time I've made it with crab meat in a while. It's really good with crab meat. Trust me, it's good without it, but man, this is delicious. This is just fantastic. Man, if that didn't make your mouth water, you must not have salivary glands. Well, if this looks like a dish you wanna try and you got something out of the video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the Marshman Masso channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. But until next time, we don't see you on the marsh. We'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.